Hello there, I'm Scotty. You and I welcome back to Halloween Horror Month. Uh, well, we are doing Cube 2 Hypercube. Now, this was not on my original. I, ch I changed this fucking schedule again. Okay? I swear, this is the last time I'm changing it. Okay? The last last time, I swear. You also might notice a bit difference for me. My hair is shorter. This is jeffed. No, this isn't recorded before the rest of it. I, I, uh, I shaved. It's still there. It's just trimmed down. It's going to bug me a little bit. I don't want to get rid of it all the way. But, uh, yeah, so here's what happened. My intention was the next two films I was going to cover were The Collector, Revisited, and The Collection for the first time. I'm still going to do those, but they're pushed back. Because I watched, uh, Cube and did the review. Then I watched Deus Deacon's review of the second and third one. I was like, I have to watch this for myself. Luckily, after I watched someone's review, I don't remember every single thing. I barely remember anything about the third one. There were some things about I remembered. Simon, the Pyman. But, like, you know, when I watch someone's review for a movie, these are, like, there's Dakin and others that do clip reviews, you know? Nostalgia Critic and Decker Shadow. Often, sometimes, you know, and last night I was half falling asleep during the these because it was kind of late for me anyway. Um, so I'm like, you know what? I need, I'm going to look and see. They have the sequels on Tubi. And they did, both of them. So, like, okay. So I come over here. That's another reason I wasn't really paying attention during that. So, go down. It's changed again, and I swear to God, it's not going to change again after this. This is it. Last time I'm changing something. It's too much. Especially since I need to record that preview video soon. It's already, you've already seen it. It's already up, but... Okay. So, Cube 2 Hypercube. is a mess. It's a mess. So... You know, I said in my review for the first film that I liked the fact that we didn't learn much about who was behind this, what was going on. It was just following them through, and uh, Kazan was the one who got away. He was left, you know, one of them got out. I didn't like the ending because it felt like at least more than one person could get out. But with this film, the way they've set this up, I don't like Kazan's odds at all. Um, so this is a sequel, all right. And there's a prequel, but this is a sequel, but it barely mentions anything about the first one. Although it is at the end of the movie, they say Phase Two is been scrapped or something, or is. A night eliminated, a night, whatever. Well, I knew three recognizable faces in the first one. I know one of them here. Carrie Matchett playing Kate. And then the actor who played Simon, I swear I'd seen it before, but I, I look it up, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure where I've seen it before. But this is right away. Watch this. No, when I started watching this, I was on my phone. If I had watched it on TV, I think I would be more uh, disoriented. Because the way they do this, man. First of all, the camera is really close like this. And she's looking around. Oh, by the way, it's like this. So she's like... There are times where they're standing there, it's, to, you know, to... Sometimes to show that they're sideways or upside down or whatever. But it's very close to this woman who we let her find is called Becky. But she's grabbed and pulled somewhere we don't know where. Until later. Then we meet. 
Uh, we get the opening titles, and then we meet this guy with a briefcase. We then find out it was a general, and then we meet our main characters. He's, by the way, this general, he's looking around, there's no numbers, there's no numbers, there's no numbers. Now, he could mean, like, numbers like in the first one, it's a nod to the first one, you know. Or, numbers as in, because later, Jerry, he keeps writing numbers, and I thought maybe that could be it too. It's a hint to how this works. So... They all just kind of come together. We meet our characters. Kate, who is played by Carrie Match. I don't know all the actors' names. We meet Simon, who is a jerk and pretends to be unconscious. And when she goes to check on him to see if he's still freaking alive, he grabs her. He has a knife, which I call bullshit. If you're being put into this thing, you find out that they've been kidnapped. They're just, this group called Eyes On is putting them in this. He wouldn't have a knife. They would not. He would. They would not allow him to have weapons to go in there. Unless it was hidden. I don't know. Then we meet Sasha, who is blind. Max, who we find out is a game programmer, and Mrs. Paley, who is cuckoo pants. Yeah, she's. So here's the first issue. They took a look at Kazan from the first film and said, "Hey." Let's try to do that again. So we have a blind girl who doesn't need to be blind. And it feels like that this character was only blind as a last minute addition. Because the rest of the story with this character makes no sense. And then we have Mrs. Paley who is senile. Because you see in the first film, Kazan, he was mentally handicapped. So we gotta have someone else with cuckoo grady pants, right? The actor does a pretty good job, but sometimes it's unsettling. I was walking my dog. Just, it, I don't know. It comes out unsettling. And we meet Jerry. Jerry Bulberry. He has a watch. And he lets you know it. And he's marking down each room he's been in. This is the fifth room, fourth room so far that we've been in. Okay, so right away, the design of this movie is drastically down. It's terrible. It's, well not terrible, it's dressed, it's worse than it was in the first film. We're trying to make it look fancy, but there's no color changes. Everything is clear white. That's it. Because I think what the set design was even cheaper. Then they didn't even, this have one, it's basically one room, jumping from one to one. The difference is like, I don't care for the cube in this movie at all it's bland white every room looks the fucking same and the traps are fucking stupid there's no like things that split them in half or things that come up from the the floor or anything it's all cgi shit like one of them they go in there's this thing that spins and when they touch it it goes out Gets Jerry, and then he's not killed. He's hurt, hurt in his back a little bit. And then there's another one. I don't know. Like this thing is like wiping through, erasing things. There's another one that there's a room that goes really fast when these two are having sex, and they age really fast for some reason. I I don't. No, the traps in this are fucking stupid. I don't I don't get it. Like, the traps in the first one were so good. You know? They could, we could compare this to Saw. Or the Hellraiser. But this, they just went full CGI bullshits with it. And it's terrible. It is terrible. It just doesn't... They make no sense. And... They, the, the way this works, they go in room to room to room to room to room to room. And the traps don't activate till after they've been in there a while. Like, with the case with the speeding up sex people, right? There's like a time dilation thing where Max, the guy, he's slow. And to him, Julia, who they find later, 
is very sped up. And they go in there, they start talking, they start to have sex. And as soon as they start to have sex, that's when it happens. The traps in here don't activate until it's necessary. Which tells you that possibly someone there is watching it and pushing a button to activate these traps. They're not set up motion sensors like in the first one. There is actually someone out there watching this pushing a button to fuck with them when they least expect it. That's what it tells me. And that concept of that this is being run by somebody who's watching it ruins the first movie if you really think about it. All right, let's go to the ending real quick. All right, it's down to Kate, Sasha, and Simon. Simon has gone nuts because he's got to be like Quentin from the first film. And at this point, the whole thing is coming down. We, it has been revealed within the story that time and space are colliding together, creating parallel universes. I think Simon kills like three Jerry's. And at this point, Simon pops up, she stabs him in the eye, falls back, and when she turns around, he's got Sasha. Or is it Alex? Because Alex is revealed to be the one who designed the cube. Let me remind you, she's fucking blind! Tell me how that makes any sense. Why is this character blind? It feels like they came up with that... Oh, at the last minute. They're like, they built this character's story. She's the one who did everything. And they're like, oh, hey, let's make her blind. Not thinking that it makes no sense that a blind person could design something like this. They're, how? How? How can a blind person design something like this hypercube? Right? It makes no sense. But after Simon kills Alex... Nice revelation that she designed this thing. doesn't go anywhere. Uh, uh, Jerry died. Or not Jerry. Simon dies. She takes care of Simon. And then it comes down to the thing. There's a little black hole. She jumps through. CGI bullshits. And she wakes up in some weird silver pool thing. Which revealed that she works for Izon. Yeah. And then they shoot her. For no reason. They give her what, they she gives them what they wanted, this thing that Alex had, and they got like proof of this or whatever, and then they shoot her. That, that's fucking stupid, right? But this ending shows you that if that, if this is went the same way in the first one, someone was monitoring them, watching them, that Kazan... That ruins the ending of the first one where Kazan got away because he walks through the light and for all we know, he, he walked through the light, got through there, and then they shot him. It would be the same for everyone, anyone else who escaped because if, if, if you put to this, see, giving us answers makes things worse here because if you put in here, you know, that these are being monitored by people, then getting out is no longer a victory. Because even if you get out, chances are someone's going to be right there and shoot you. So for all we know, Kazan got out and they shot him right as soon as he walked out. Which is cruelty because he was handicapped. But still, I don't know. I don't know. This, this ending retroactively... Ruins the first film for me. I really liked the first film, but to, now when I rewatch it, I'm be there going, "Oh yeah, who's watching them?" Because this decides they decided whoever made this fucking movie decided we need to give the people some answers, and the answers you gave us are bullshit. Okay, like why? Because now we have to consider. That they're being watched. We go into the prequel. Which now makes no sense. Because they called this phase 2. Was that phase 0? I don't know. We go into the prequel. 
when they do any, if they did any other sequels, the whole time I got to think, oh, they're going to be monitoring. And the twist, like, the twist of her being involved, like, working for Ison, still doesn't work. Because she and Alex are alone in one of the, the cubes. Why doesn't she break character? Why doesn't she tell her? You know, why why doesn't she why doesn't Kate break character here? There's no one else there. She's free to reveal herself. I don't get it. There's probably another last minute thing. You know, oh let's make her and then she gets shot? What? Come on. I don't know. I enjoy Mrs. Paley. She's cuckoo bananas, but <sighs> it started out fine. I mean, not not the first scene, but like I was into it. I wanted to introduce, him. okay, it's fine. And then as we got closer and closer to the end of the movie. That it just got weirder and weirder and weirder with the time stuff. As soon as they started introducing the time stuff, I'm like, okay, what what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Because no so introducing time space stuff implies we were in the future. However, some of the dialogue in here indicates otherwise, like such as Max. You know, declaring that they're on some game show being videotaped. He he says videotaped. So not recorded, videotaped. Which means this could only take place in some time around this was released, which is like doesn't one ish. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, a part of me thinks that they should have just left it at one. Because this. Look. I understand. When you do a sequel, you have to give some answers. But I, I, I just feel like the answer that. Oh, it's this government agency that's not watching and monitoring everything. And then you show that as soon as one gets out, even though she's working for them, she gets killed. Well, it's a no-win situation, then, right? So even if you escape, you're st they're, they're not going to let you live. So, you know, that tells me that Kazan is probably dead. You know? I don't know. I don't know. Uh... But I don't know. I do know I don't want to talk about this anymore. So, it's not worth your time. That is the verdict for this movie. It's not worth your time. Just watch the first one and forget about this one. I don't know about the next one, but probably the same thing. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but... So, what are your thoughts on Cube 2? Hypercube? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.